I don't know if you'll ever need to go to a recording. But, and the other thing is when I figure out that I, I might not be in class, then I'll record it ahead of time and send it to you. And you can do the usual thing, you know, read beforehand, make comments, listen to the lecture, make comments, and then do the takeaway. And then the next time we'll do, start with that, and then we'll go to the next thing. So, so I appreciate your ability to be flexible, Ivy. And, you know, sometimes I think, yeah, but Ivy already has so much to adjust to. And then I'm thinking, well, that's probably why this doesn't bother her. <laughs> 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 right? If you're, yeah. If you're resilient, like this is nothing. Like it's not life and death. Um, so, um, okay. So, well, let's see. I just, gosh. Ah. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I'm going to turn the recording off. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to stop. All right, so let's go back to the screen share. Um, all right. Um, the first one, well, let me, I'll just do it on the stream. Okay, Greek history and Greek wisdom. So this isn't a very long reading. Um, it's just excerpts from a popular, I guess, what is it, 23 pages? But they're not very long pages. But it's a certain view of the lessons of Greece, right? I mean, everybody has a different view, but you can read that. Um, I think, let me see, August 18th. Yeah, we're, we're already... Yeah, it was due for today, but we can make that up. So okay. you can comment on that, read that. Then I have this very brief Greek history of how they defeated, the main thing is they defeated the Persians who were big empire builders. And they had one demigod that they worshiped. So no citizen engagement in life. And that after they defeated them, they had this big golden age and all these things came together. But then they started fighting against the Spartans. The other Wait a minute, was... it's two o'clock in the morning right now for you? No, no, I'm actually in Minnesota. I'm not in, okay. but it will be, right? It will be uh, two weeks okay. from now. Yeah, it gets complicated. And every once in a while I say the wrong thing and really mess you up. But I'm here, I'm in Minnesota, same time zone. Okay, I was just for two weeks. making sure you weren't like, up too early <laughs> i have i it, when i taught in bangladesh there were meetings that started at 4 a.m but <laughs> it goes on anyway okay. so then we have um the golden age and then the battle the war between sparta and athens and athens acted very arrogantly and stupidly and they eventually lost and then uh, in the name of returning Athens to traditional values, family, loyalty to your city state, and loyalty to the city's gods, they elected Critias and he became a dictator. He killed off or ostracized all of his political opponents and all these other foreigners. And he lasted nine months. And then the Greeks who had escaped to other city states they attacked and they took over the democracy. But then Socrates was killed and then Plato started his academy to try and explain to the world, to all of his future students or readers, this is how we lost our democracy. Don't do this, <laughs> okay. But we're gonna start with, um, we're gonna, in this class, we study a whole lot of different aspects of the um, of the culture as a whole. So we talk about the Crete culture. It was a woman-centered culture. And then Delphi was the transitional place where it went from matriarchy to patriarchy, Olympia and Corinth. But we have a day on each of these to show how the Greek gods, there are temples and stores stories of the founding that are associated with these different gods in these different locations. 
And so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the mythology. Each one represents living for the sake of something greater than yourself. So this is the stuff you should remember from world philosophies. Do you remember that? It was like the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go over that again. And then we'll do something about Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey. We, we have a day or two about that. Um, and the, the foundation there is that every young person, every student, college student, has to decide what am I going to live for? What's going to be my ultimate goal in life? Is it going to be pleasure, wealth, power, glory, you know, popularity, having the most, being an influencer, you know, having the most Facebook, whatever, friends, or um, justice and wisdom. Um, and, and then once you decide, you structure your life around it. So you can seek justice and wisdom and also uh, get a career and get paid and also get promoted and have some power, but you're not in it for the money or for the power. It makes a lot of difference because you have to make decisions all along the way. Um, Sorry, my pencil fell. That's okay. Um, so, I mean, almost everybody in their, if they're pursuing a career or a calling, they have to sacrifice money or pleasure, right? You have to study hard. You have to put up with not having a lot of money. So college is like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's for the sake of something else. And you might be in college just to get a more high paying job. No matter what the job is, that's all I care about. Well, you're gonna end up working with other people just like that. So you're probably not gonna respect the people you work with. They will be cutthroat people. Um, you might be selling products. You don't even think people can buy or should buy. I mean, there's a price to pay for saying money is all I care about. And then power, it's the same way. And I, I think a lot of Trump's enablers kept enabling him because they want power, right? Um, a lot of the Republican politicians tell the Democrats they totally disagree with Trump, blah, blah, but they go on, on the media and say, oh, he's great because they don't want to lose their position. And um, that's the price you pay. If power, no matter what, I'll lie, cheat, steal, I'll do anything. I'll sell my soul out to keep getting reelected. I think anybody who runs for office needs to ask themselves, are you going to sell your soul? And there's some political parties where you don't even get or a candidate unless you say yes. And there's other political parties where no, you know. Um, one of the political leaders said, we always ask people running for office, do they have another job they can have? Um, if they lose, because they have, we want them to stand up for something and risk losing, they have an alternative. A lot of them are lawyers. So they, the, the party wants them to have another career so that they don't sell their soul out. Makes a lot of difference, right? Um, anyway, so we'll talk about um, that. What are you living for? And so the Iliad is about two societies at war and the Trojans were dedicated to pleasure and wealth and the Achaeans were dedicated to power and glory and all the dysfunction that happens. Um, and then the Odyssey is about Odysseus had PTSD, right? He lost his emotions. He, he lost it. And so the Odyssey is about him regaining his ability to understand his relationship to women, which is his emotional side. So that's that Odyssey is finding his way back to having some integrity. 
Um, and then we study three tragedies. I have you reading three tragedies. Then we study pre-Socratic philosophy, where the philosophers are speculating about what's the natural foundation for reality. Um, and then democracy, of course, we studied the democracy rule for the sake of the rules and how the, the way the society developed was more and more citizen engagement in life and how the institutions were designed and um, stuff like that. So we talk about that. Um, and then how they lost their democracy. And I have analogies with US history here, if you want to look at that. And the Socrates as a gadfly, Socrates and Jesus. Plato was a student of Socrates, and Plato's dialogues are tragedies. But um, we'll just go over that implicitly throughout the class. Um, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. OK, let me just scroll through here. So next time, read Greek wisdom. And then these are the pre-Socrats. Um, let's see, there's the lecture outline, the handout, and the map. So again, I don't think there's a lot of reading here. Um, but just for you to get a sense. Is that the one I'm reading tonight? Well, actually, you need to do both. Well, when is the next class? Oh, you want to have a class tomorrow? Oh, I actually have to go out of town tomorrow. It's Friday. Yeah, that's fine. It's Friday. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so actually, there's this isn't a lot of material, and you can we'll do it for next. Uh, what the, day? Is next it? Monday. Let's see. Yeah, I guess Monday, because Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> we're still on. We're still on the the original schedule, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so so today would be the last day according to that schedule. Yeah, yeah. We're still on the one o'clock and two fifteen, right? Mm -hmm. So next Tuesday. Next week we go at Monday. No, no, that's not until the next time. Right, oh, next okay. we're going in the afternoon, right? Next week, I'm going to be in town. And it'll be in the week. afternoon. Yeah, it'll be right after the. You'll be sitting in the Miller room with Liam. Tuesday and Thursday next week. Yes. Okay. Yep. And so the reading for Tuesday is two days, but it's not a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. it, it's just uh, outlines. And Oh boy. Okay. Oh, this is, what is this? Maybe this is a reading, 20 pages. Yeah. Okay. Here's the reading. So 20 pages of reading. So the previous one at 23, this is longer. Again, you don't have to read it all. My goodness. Where'd it go? Okay. I'll, okay. I'll try to, to load that on so that it works. Um, I might also just tell you to read 10 pages out of that and pick out which pages. But the general idea is that um, is that they have this idea that we are the creature that's able to recognize patterns in a universe that's ordered. So the patterns are actually there and we can understand them. And so the pre-Socratics, they disagreed with each other and they set up different schools of thought, but all of them are trying to find out what's the pattern. And so, so they were, you know, why is there lightning? It isn't because Zeus is, is throwing his thunderbolts, right? Or why is there thunder? Or Zeus has these lightning bolts, you know? They're finding natural causes for things. And, um, but on the other hand, the Hesiod, when he's talking about the patterns, he uses the deities, but that's about psychology. It's not about um, physics or, or um, science, right? It's about psychology. So now we have patterns in the natural world, 
that you study by studying the universe. Now we study physics um, or biology, all those chemistry, all of those things are ways that we found these patterns in the natural world. So the pre-Socratics are, you know, kind of foundational in the, in the West, in Greece. Again, there were Egyptians before that, and we just have to start somewhere. And I do think you should know it's, it isn't the real beginning of anything. It is a beginning. And so I just wanted at 800 BC, there was this collective understanding among a lot of people in that area. They start to bounce off of each other and they realized, my God, there are these patterns out there and we can understand them. And we want to, like, this is what we should be doing. And this is what will enable us to create a legacy, to create a better world in the future. Um, so that was the point of it all. Let's see. Um, okay, that, so that's for next time. And there's your post. Um, then this, this article is about psychology the Aristotle psychology, where you're trying to make your mind a microcosm into the macrocosm, and you're trying to train your mind to think cosmically. And so um, I compare it to some current thinkers today, too. And the next one is um, the Crete, the goddesses of Crete. So that's a, a matriarchy, a woman-centered um, and then um, I have some articles about that. And this one is about what Liam was talking about, how Reddit, the site Reddit, is using ancient text. I'm sorry. The, the site called Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why this is red, but it's, um, it's using classics like the Stoics to justify male domination. And you don't have to read this because there's two other readings, but it's written by Mark Zuckerberg's sister. It's kind of interesting. She's a feminist classicist. So she went the other direction of her brother, which happens in families, right? They really go in different directions. Um, anyway, so we study, we have a day studying Crete, the goddesses of Crete. Then we have Hesiod, who is the origin story, is the creation story. So again, it's like the Bible. You can do similarities and differences. Um, then we have more of Hesiod. Okay, so I think that's two days on Hesiod and Jung. Um, then we have Aristotle's virtues, and we did that in world philosophies. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. So that'll Aristotle. Be, yeah, remember his virtues, yes. temperance, courage. Um, so, uh, temperance here, self control. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember that, and so that'll be familiar to you. And so what we do is we study the tragedies and Hesiod and Homer and Plato in terms of that the artist is trying to educate people, show them that loving wisdom is what they really deeply inside want because any other alternative is a disaster. Um, then we have Delphi, the transition from matriarchy to patriarchy. Then there's a lecture on the Olympics. Then there's a lecture on Homer. Um, and so then I there's a paper that you can write the first paper anytime. Let's see, I'm trying to think of anytime before a certain date. Anyway, there's the paper grade stuff. Then we have the play Oedipus. So we talk about Oedipus and how it's trying to train you to, it's trying to 
make you emotionally more mature, right? Emotionally mature. Then there's um, the a discussion of tragedy. What are the characteristics of a tragedy? Then there's another tragedy. You read Philoctetes, uh, then Agamemnon and Hecuba. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that some of these are gonna take two days, not one day, but we'll see. Um, then this one is about Plato's dialogues. Plato, the rise and fall of Athenian democracy because everything was sort of leading up to that. Um, the, in Homer, there's the, Troy is a city, the wealthiest city and Paris, the, the prince ends up visiting um, the Menelaus and um, stealing his wife, Helen. Okay, well, you can't have that, right? If Michelle and Barack Obama went to Russia and Michelle got kidnapped, <laughs> I mean, right? You can't put up with that. So it was a just war to go to war with them if they wouldn't give her back. But the people who fought to get her back were so unjust and they treated the Trojans in a way that was way more brutal than the Trojans treated the Achaeans. So the point is that war creates so many problems. It doesn't solve problems. But also that if you dedicate your society to wealth, you're bound to have children that pursue their desires like sex, right? Or whatever they want and ignore the well being of the city, the spoiled brat rich kids, which they do, right? Uh, the Fox News, um, the, the children of Fox, they don't believe at all for a minute what Fox is doing but they're so obsessed with money that they'll do anything and they don't care. Like they're destroying democracy, but they don't care. And they inherit this and they think they deserve it. And all this inheriting of wealth is just killing us. And those, the children of a society dedicated to pleasure and wealth are gonna destroy that society. Um, and we don't, again, the media doesn't cover it that much, but it matters a lot <laughs> if all these wealthy kids are ignoring any kind of concern for the well being of the city. All right. And so the other one is the Achaeans, and all they care about is power. They just want to win, and they're going to win at any cost. And they brutalize the Trojans. And um, uh, Achilles, all he cares about is personal glory. And he's going to, there's all this infighting between them because one of them wants power and one of them wants glory. And so all these other people suffer because of that. So that's, that's one way to tell the story about patterns in human life. So, oh, I was getting at Ecclesia. In each case, the citizens met an Ecclesia of citizens. That's ecclesi Ecclesiastics in um, the Bible. They have Ecclesia. Well, that's where they meet. And Priam tells the citizens what he's going to do. And they're allowed to vote. Do you want us to keep Helen or do you want us to give her back? And they voted to keep her. And that was what Priam also wanted, but it was wrong. And the priests said it was wrong. So the Trojans voted against what the priests said, which was what was true. On the other hand, the Achaeans, they also met in the Ecclesia and they had to decide whether Agamemnon should give back this woman he was sleeping with to the priest at Delphi who came to get her and pay her to ransom. Now he should have given her back because the priest at Delphi is priest, he's sacred. You don't violate that. But he wanted to keep her, but he met the Ecclesia and the Ecclesia said, you should give her back. 
but he didn't anyway, because these guys do have absolute power. It doesn't matter what the Ecclesia votes, but in one case, they voted wrongly, incorrectly. In another case, they voted correctly. But the point is that all of this was building up to having a society where actually the ecclesia of citizens votes and they make the decisions, right? They have the power. Does that make sense to you, Ivy? Mm -hmm. And then Plato's saying, yeah, and we, we destroyed that also. <laughs> okay, so it's about corruption. Anyway, so then we have the Republic, Plato's Republic, and we read that um, three days, four days, lots of days, because it's long, five days, six days. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's long, though, and I have a lot of extra readings and all that stuff. But anyway, um, then I have some Martin Luther King, some applications of all what's going on in the U.S., um, and reactions to some of the stuff. So again, I, I think I posted an awful lot of stuff and I will, I will tell you if you don't have to read it all, okay? Um, but that's kind of how the class goes, is that you see how it, it all fits together. There's sort of a history of when they first became aware that you can actually think about this, you can learn about this, you can make progress, you can develop, and you're supposed to, like you've been given these psychic powers, you're able to understand what sort of laws would lead to human flourishing. You're able to understand that it's a higher level of life to distribute wealth, to uh, punish wrongdoing in a way that always tries to promote human well-being, that that creates stability over time. If you want to pass on a world to your children that is um, as stable as possible, you need to be doing this all the time. Um, and that's what you should be deliberating about. You know, every single decision that's made about tax policy, housing policy, education policy, um, incarceration policy, um, all of these policies that are made should always be what is most likely to lead to the largest and most stable possible middle class for now and for the future. Um, and that was what the Greeks tried to cultivate in their citizens. And that's why I think it's amazing, right? I'm always amazed. And it's not because I think the Greeks are better. I don't like to be a you know, a bigot or anything. I just think I, I like telling the story because I think it's an amazing story and it's a very cautionary story. And after World War II, the US was the torch was passed. So we were supposed to care, be the beacon of what a democracy is about because Europe supposedly had these democracies and yet they reverted to authoritarianism and they collapsed, you know, every, all, all the parts of Europe, the economy collapsed. So the torch was passed to us and we set up the United Nations, we set up NATO, we set up the World Trade Organization, we set up Geneva conventions, we set up international trade, we set up a lot of stuff it's about, you know, to try to build up a society where there's a balance of power, where everybody wants everybody else to flourish. There was what was called the Marshall Plan that um, where the Germans were allowed to rebuild their country and they developed, they paid, we paid their engineers to do it. And they have thrived ever since. It was a really good plan. But it was very, we couldn't profit off of it. It was very, very committed to saying we care about the well-being of other countries. It's not just about power. And it's not just about wealth. Now, what happened in Iraq was exactly the opposite. So we invaded there for money. 
that was our goal. And it's, it's all verified, right? Right after 9-11, there was a group of people who said, whose goal had been for a long time to try and make the world um, better for, for American interests. And we needed Mideast oil. So the goal was to set up 134 military bases in the Mideast so that we could get cheap oil. Well, and they wanted, they had always wanted to go after Saddam. They were mad that George H.W. Bush had a containment policy. He didn't invade. Um, that the first war was when Iraq invaded Kuwait and we fended them off. Well, Kuwait used to be a part of Iraq. So he was just trying to get it back when the West broke it off and made deals with the people in Kuwait to get cheap oil, right? So Saddam had good reasons, uh, but okay, Iraq war number one is push him back. Then, um, but there were, there were people, Dick Cheney was Cheney's dad, who wanted, always <laughs> wanted to go into um, Iraq and get that cheap oil. So they always wanted to invade. Well, after 9-11, oh, we're going to tie this to Saddam and get Americans to agree to invade. It was not Saddam who did it. They knew it was not Saddam who did it, but they did it for money. And then after they invaded, when they had the rebuilding project, it was $80 billion, 20 billion of it. 60 billion of it was just to protect our troops. Only 20 billion of it even pretended to care about rebuilding. And it was all American companies that profited from it. And even when Iraq had companies that specialized in these products, our, our guys went in there. It was all economic exploitation. They even brought in Filipinos to do the work and built these little villages for them. It was just, it was so evil and ugly. And they compared it to the Marshall Plan. I used to teach a logic class because I had these articles about, is it really the same as the Marshall Plan? It wasn't at all. And so we have become an, an oligarchy, the rule of the rich. And the rich control our foreign policy. They control our tax policy, right? The middle class has shrunk. So, um, so this is the story. And so I wanted, you know, the class is about how Greece rose and then it sank. And you're supposed to use analogies, right, with the U.S. It rose after 1945, and now it's really struggling. Um, does that make sense, Ivy? Yes. And so for, from your point of view as an artist, and I'll quit in a few minutes, really. Um, you, I hope that you get, you know, the stories and the myths will give you ideas for your art. Mm -hmm. And the stories of Crete, the goddesses, will give you ideas. A lot of women are creating art based on being inspired by these stories of the goddesses. And then um, the stories of Homer and tragedy. My view is that after matriarchy was replaced by patriarchy, at the Oracle of Delphi, um, they predicted the, this is gonna make men arrogant because now the God of reason, because men are going to take over and they're going to use their reason. There's all sorts of ways that they can become extremely arrogant. So the mission of the poets, the main lesson of the poets, their, their mission was to tell stories about men who were being arrogant and ignorant and destroying things and trying to show them, don't do that. Don't mm -hmm. do that. So, so I think, you know, the poets are the educators. If you want to do science, you got to write a poem. 
but also the main project is now that the rule of reason has replaced it. Now that human history is going to be driven by science, math, technology, um, and, and actually persuasive speaking, all of these left-brained um, language-based, number-based capacities that we have, these intellectual virtues, now that it's going to be driven by that, it's got to be linked to moral education and emotional education. And the poets have to constantly be reminding these guys, don't do that. <laughs> and, um, and there's women, there's powerful women who also make mistakes. Um, but anyway, so, so that's, that I hope I, I hope you know you'll feel inspired to to you know you'll at least understand this is going to put in the back of your mind and you might use it as an artist. Um, and then the Iliad and all those stories, the tragedies, and I have one on Hecuba, the abuses of women, but women are always an issue in all of them, and there's all these mistakes people make, but there's always at least one person or one group of person that gets it right. There's, there's always this light out of the darkness that is, this is the way they should have gone. This is what they should have done. Um, so we have the tragedies and then we have um, those, the view of the training your mind to be a microcosm. Again, that's, you know, an artist should have the emotional you know, counterpart to that. And then um, Plato's dialogues about how you lost a democracy. And again, that there's a lot of artists nowadays that are trying to alert Americans to what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I also think African American culture is, you know, so during Black Lives Matter, I think I said this. I, you know, my dad marched in Selma when I was 10. And so I mm -hmm. followed the civil rights movement somewhat. I mean, I was in junior high, high school. But this time, the difference was there are so many more professional African-Americans, right? There just that weren't that many um, political leaders, like the mayor of Atlanta, the mayor of major towns where Black women are, um, Detroit, you know, some of the towns that were having mm -hmm. troubles, they interviewed those women. Uh, many Black um, governors, uh, U.S. House Representative, U.S. Senate, and then there's lawyers, lots of Black lawyers, uh, doctors. There were women doctors interviewed about how do you encourage African Americans to, to take the vaccine. Um, it's just that was good, right? It's much better than it was, but it's still got a long ways to go. And then there's always the athletes and the artists and the, you know, musicians and the poets. Um, so I, but anyway, I just encourage you because those are real insights. Those are important insights. And I think white people have gotten lazy or they've gotten arrogant or they're into denial, right? of their privilege. So mm -hmm. there's lots of lessons to learn. So I hope the class will like inspire you as an artist. Um, and you can write your posts from that point of view if you want to, you know, every week. Uh, what are my reactions? Um, and you could even write your final paper on what is the artistic legacy of the Greeks, right? What have they passed on? that can inspire artists today. If that's how you want to emphasize it, that works for me. Um, anything else you want to ask? Um, okay. Okay. So that means I will see you next Tuesday at one o'clock and at 2.15 for this class, right? Yes. And we'll see if there's a class in the Miller room at 2.30. There might be, and we can just move to some other room. We can go to my office in Alpha. There should be. Really? Yeah, uh, there is a class in here right now. 
Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. There's no class. That's good. I think most of the teachers don't like that room. I love that room. It's really cold in here. So cold. Well, the reason I liked it is you could sit next to each other and you could talk. Like it didn't have all the high techy smells and bells, right? And I even had my own PowerPoint projector. But I don't like it when the teacher is standing way apart from the students and punching buttons. And I just, obviously, I wouldn't like that. Mm -hmm. It's not the way my classes are. Um, so my classes are very different. What do you think? You know, you can't stand up there like that. Well, what do you think? I mean, it's more like, you know, what's the answer to the question? Are the kinds of questions which have these objective answers, right? Anybody, everybody would give the same answer. It's the right answer. Whereas in my classes, nobody's going to have the same response, not even close. Um, and that's what, that's, you know, the way I want it. Um, all right, so, okay, Ivy, and thanks a lot. Um, and thanks for being flexible, and we will get through this. Thank you.